Hi everyone, welcome to University of Louisville Health Jewish Hospital. I'm Dana Settles. I'm one of the cardiac anesthesiologists here. I'll be helping you out today to introduce you to our setup, sterile technique, and all sorts of introductory concepts here. So we're going to get started over on our ventilator. Uh, first thing I want you to make sure you have set up in the morning is to always have a pacer box here and ready to go. Turn it on up top. Make sure you have a full battery. And then you can turn that off. Make sure you always have a pacer box. Another thing as part of your setup that you're not used to having, you will obviously have your airway, your, uh, your blades, all the normal stuff that you would have. But I want you also to have your neuromonitoring stuff ready. You will have two cerebral oximeters and then also your BIS. And we're going to go over placement of that in just a moment. Uh, next on your back table, you'll have your drugs. Um, you will have standard indu induction drugs, propofol, fentanyl, and your paralytics. Have a syringe for your antibiotics. Next, you're going to have a variety of syringes, both for uppers and downers. You have cardine and nitroglycerin. Next, you have your epi, neo, and vaso syringes. Next, you're going to create a large syringe for neosinephrine that you're going to give off to perfusion, along with two vials of amicar. On the back side, I want you to keep your heparin syringe separate from your amicar syringes. Make sure everything is separate so you don't accidentally grab the wrong syringe. So you have a syringe of heparin, two of amicar, and also magnesium. And that is your basic drug setup. Okay, so next we're going to talk about your infusion lines and your drips. Um, Starting over here on the left side, this carrier at either 50 cc's or 100 cc's an hour is going to be your carrier for all of your drips. These drips here will be filled with Epi, Levofed, Cardine, Nitro, Primacor, all these from here over. And this will be your carrier for that. This line will be plugged into the orange part of your swan and we're going to go over that in just a little bit. But this is your carrier for your drip line and you'll plug all those into here. The next carrier I'd like to talk about is our insulin. That is going to be over here on the far right. The carrier for that is usually set at 30 and then your insulin will be over here. I put these over here on the right side because these are going to be separate and these are going to plug into a peripheral IV. So these are going to be separate from all of your other drips. So this is your insulin with your carrier plugged into a peripheral IV. The rest of these drips are going to go to your swan or if you don't have a swan to the white port of your central line and we'll go over that in just a moment and your carrier is at 100 and all those drips are plugged into this manifold here. The next part I want to go over is your hotline and your cold line. So what we do is here's your hotline right here. And what we do is you have these two manifold holders here. So the brown port is going to be here. So we're going to pretend that this is into a patient. So this is going to be your hotline. The hotline is here. It's on the top. And it is plugged into the brown port of your 9 French Mac. So if you remember the hot brown sandwich that's famous from the Brown Hotel, that's how we remember the hot brown. And that is always on the top. And then this bottom line is cold. We do not have a hot line plugged into it. So this top line that's brown is for your packed red blood cells and your FFP. This bottom line that's connected to the white port of the 9 French Mac is your cold line. And that is what you will give your FFP and your cryo through. So this is how we want it set up every time. We do that for a reason. Number one, um, as residents, you just need to learn the setup and it's important that you're learning cardiac anesthesia. It's not important for you to learn individual attending. So we all do it the same way so that you can focus on learning the cases. And also if you go into other rooms to help people specifically in emergency situations, it's important to know exactly where your 
where your lines are and where they're going. So the hot brown line is always on the top manifold. The cold white is on the bottom and it's plugged in just like we showed there, white and brown. So next what we're gonna do is one of our residents, Steve, who now will live in infamy here at UofL, um, is helping me out today. He's one of our TE residents and so uh, he got roped into this. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to get your patient ready. Um, first, once they're on the table, uh, it's important that we do cerebral oximetry on them. So you're gonna wipe off their forehead. This is gonna be one of the first things you do. And as you've noticed, Steve is not on oxygen right now. So if your patient is not on oxygen and doesn't require oxygen, when you do this, I want you to leave them on room air. If for some reason your patient is uh, requiring some nasal oxygen, you can go ahead and hook that up, but you'll just have to um, kind of document that in the chart. But if you can, try to get this on room air. So first thing you're gonna do is put these on right above the eyebrows. One on the right, one on the left. And next you'll do your BIS monitor over that. The Neuromonitoring specialists recommend that these are just right above the eyebrows. This goes right on top. Sorry, Steve, you've never had mm -hmm. one of these. It's actually really scratchy. And then this one goes, drops down right there on the bone. So you push these in. You might want to warn the patient that these are just a touch scratchy. How bad was that, Steve? More than I expected. <laughs> so next what you're going to do is you're going to hook up the cerebral oximetry. If you look at these, you'll notice that there's a blue light flashing on that. That is always your left. You can hook that one up first. That's left. Here's right. And then you'll hook up your BIS cable. So before you put any oxygen on your patient, remember your patient's on room air, you're gonna come back over here to this monitor. Here's your next step once your cerebral oximetry pads are on is you wanna take your baselines. So you can see here that Steve is sitting at 83 and 80. We're going to go to a new data set. You can see it's searching right here. You're going to hit menu, set baselines, and then hit retake all baselines, and then close. And you'll see over here for your reference, you have your baselines of 80 and 83. And then you can see as your patient deviates throughout surgery. So this is how you'll set up your neuromonitors. Once you have your baselines there, then you can go ahead and pre-oxygenate your patient. Our next step is we're gonna go over sterile technique and swans. All right guys, this will be the last part of this video. Um, we're gonna go over sterile technique, how to place your swan, gown and glove, your lines, all that. So first, make sure all jewelry is off, everything off from around your neck, wash your hands, um, when I go over how to gown and glove, I do this in a way that you guys don't need anyone else to help you, just in case the nurses or somebody else is tied up. So wash your hands. Next, you're going to get everything ready here so that you can gown and glove all by yourself. Open up your gloves. Have your gown ready. So... What I do so that nobody has to fasten the gown is I take the sides around the neck, open that up, and then I take those, put that around my neck. And obviously I would normally have a mask on. Put that, fasten that around my neck and just slide my arms through so that way it's fastened in the back and I don't have to ask someone to help me and my gown isn't falling down. Next, you're going to place your gloves on by yourself, and then you will be ready to go. Again, I realize I don't have a mask on, and that's obviously a part of sterile technique. So I've done all this. My gown is on. It's not falling off, and I haven't need anybody to help me out. Uh, next, we're going to go over how to prep your kit. This is your 9 French MAC line. So what you'll do is place your dilator in the center. Make sure you close off all your lines, lock here, lock there. An important aspect of placing lines is to always make sure everything has a cap. And as you start to practice here, you will learn that we are very strict about that. All, all ports must have caps on them. If you don't, that is an opportunity for infection. So make sure that all your lines 
uh, arterial or venous all have caps on them. So this is how you'll get your nine French Mac ready. Uh, next you'll get your Fabian ready. Fabian is to make sure that your puncture is venous and not arterial. Get that ready. Do you mind silencing that? And we'll get our syringe ready. With the cap, slide that down. And then lastly, get your wire ready. For most of you, placing a swan will be, this will be the first rotation that you've placed a swan on. So we will pretend that this line is already in our patient. So the next thing that you need to do is get ready to place your swan. So Steve, you can go ahead and grab the catheter there. And I'll, I'll stay with sterile technique. So this is really important and something that we go over a lot here. First of all, you will get your sheath ready for the swan. And remember, I'm sterile. Steve is not. So you're going to grab, hook your catheter here. Pull that out. So there's two ports to this. This part with that little interlocking system is the distal part. So you're going to grab your catheter, put it through this opposite end. Now, this is sitting in the patient's heart. So it is absolutely imperative that you maintain sterile technique and keep this sterile throughout the procedure. Patients are receiving artificial uh, valves. And if for some reason this becomes contaminated, you could uh, contaminate that new valve. So what you're going to do is lock the backside at 80 slide the sheath forward till about 40 and then pass the backside off to your assistant so that everything from that 80 on is sterile. Now what Steve is going to do is he's going to hook this up so that we can flush all of our ports and make sure that this swan is good to go. So what he's going to do is he connected the balloon syringe. Next he's going to connect yellow to yellow, blue to blue, and then last, he's going to place a flush on the orange port. It's also called a pacer port. And before you place this in a patient, you have to flush everything. You never, ever want to inject air into your patient. So all of your catheters, all of your swans, everything has to be flushed before you actually use them. So now we're going to focus in on the swan and show you how we do this. So first, we're going to flush our pacer port, which is going to come out at 20. And there's fluid there. Next, we're going to flush blue, which is going to be at 30. That's our CVP. Next, we're going to flush yellow. That's our PA. That'll be the distal port. And last, we're going to check the balloon. You never want to float a swan with a broken balloon. So we're going to inflate that. And the balloon works. And we're going to deflate. And then we're ready to float our swan. So again, make sure here whenever you're doing anything with lines, uh, make sure that everything has a cap on it. When you go up to ICU, make sure that all of your lines, everything is protected with a port. Um, every port is protected with a cap. And also on all of our patients, before we go upstairs, check your dressings, make sure they're clean. If you need to reprep and place new dressings, go ahead and do that. Uh, place OGs on all your patients. Uh, the only exception to that is our lung transplant patients. You will place NGs on them. And this is our basic introductory setup. So this is something that we teach every resident that comes through here. Um, I hope this was helpful. If you need to, watch this video again as many times as you need. I'm always here to help you and other staff is as well. Thank you.